Hey guys, follow along as we put the Stage 1 Performance Kit from Go Power Sports on the Predator 224 in my Megamoto 212. Thanks for watching. In the last video, I tried getting the lighting coils up and running on this Predator 224, and we hit a little bit of a snag. What I didn't tell you was that I'd also tried installing a Stage 1 kit on the 224 and hit a small little snag. What we have here is a spacer with a rubber gasket kind of built into it that uh, is from a Predator 212. I found these from Dino Cams. Uh, I'll throw a link down in the description. Not affiliated, but handy to have. And the problem we run into is that that's from a Predator 212. The kit that I have is for a Predator 212. And because this is a Ducar engine, as opposed to wherever the Predator comes from, the, uh, the air box is just a little bit different. So I got into a little bit of a problem when I tried installing this air horn in that the, the back of this was interfering with the, uh, with the choke arm. I think we're in good shape now. We've got, uh, I've actually got two of these spacers plus some gaskets, so we should be able to uh, space this out from the engine adequately. Let's uh, grab some tools and we'll start taking this air box off. I've got a couple of Phillips head screws. Come down and hold the two halves of the air box together. We've got uh, a couple of vent hoses that come off the back side that we pull out. And you can see that the, uh, the original gasket has kind of not done well kind of created its own almost like a little o-rings here but the kit did come with new gaskets so those now what we've got here and this is what was causing the problem on the predator 212 what amounts to this little groove right here is part of the spacer and it's built into this air box so that doesn't work all that well but if we put the spacer on there and then slide the air horn in place. That gives us a reasonably decent amount of clearance. This bracket has to be attached to hold the choke arm in place. And having just this little bit of space makes all the difference. The arm that holds the choke lever in place attaches to the back of the air horn here. And it has a little bit of adjustment. We might have to modify that just a little bit. That appears to work. We'll get that snug down with a 5 16 that keeps the choke working. Another little problem that we have here is these uh, acorn style nuts. I could take a, uh, a grinder and grind off the acorn tip, but I kind of like the acorn tip. What we'll do instead is I have some uh, washers, build up that uh, fitting, and then we can put the acorn nut on. And you can see the choke works just fine. Now we can put our air filter on, turning it slightly to, uh, to find the best angle. However, I don't want to do that just yet. because One of the other things that we need to do is install the main jet. With the kit comes a replacement main jet. This is slightly larger than the factory size. This gives a little bit more fuel because we'll have far better airflow through the engine once we do the, uh, the intake side and the exhaust. Now that we've got this all sorted out, I'm going to take the carburetor off, just pull it out slightly so that we can get at the bottom of the engine. The bolt that goes up through the center of the carburetor has a uh, 10 millimeter head and of course we are going to lose a little bit of fuel. I do have the fuel shut off though so we shouldn't get too much dripping. What we need to do is get up inside of there with a nice flat blade screwdriver. I don't know whether this shows up or not, but there, you'll see that there's a uh, essentially a slot for a flat blade screwdriver all the way across. The easiest way to get to the jet and make sure that you're not going to carve anything up is to pull the carburetor off. I was hoping to avoid to do this, but we got to do what we got to do. We've got the spring and we've got the rod that comes out of the governor and it, if you uh, put it at the full extent, will just pop up out of there. Now one problem we've got is our fuel line 
Fortunately, I don't have a pair of vice grips with me to clamp it off. So we'll pull it off of there and quite quickly shove a quarter inch bolt up into it. And hopefully that'll block it off so that we don't lose the full tank of fuel that we have. Carburetor slides off. Up in here we have our main jet. Fuel flows in here, up through the main jet into the engine. This is our emulsion tube. We need to make sure that it stays up in there. And there's the original jet and our new one. Make sure that the slot for the screwdriver stays on the outside. Drop that down into the opening for it and then we snug it back up. The gasket on the motor side looks like it's still in good shape. While we've got it apart, I'm going to turn the float bowl around so that we can get at the, uh, the nice little drain here when necessary. And then we thread the bowl retention bolt back in place. Reconnect the fuel line, governor and governor return spring. A couple things we need to be careful of here. You notice that there's some notches. We've got passages. We need to make sure that the openings in the spacer line up with those two openings and this one in there so that uh, they get proper airflow and govern the float level and mixture appropriately. Now we can put our air horn back on, put our five washers and our acorn nuts. Install the air filter on the air horn with the uh, attack or with the included hose clamp. Now we have a nice little pre-filter that needs to get stripped over the top of our air filter, which is easier said than done. Now we've got our pre-filter installed over top of the filter cone. It is a very tight fit, but it does fit on there. And uh, this keeps the worst of the water from being ingested into the filter media and also, uh, you know, keeps your large chunks of mud, etc., from being uh, flung up off the wheels and into the, uh, the intake. So this gives us our intake and carburetor side of the installation is completed. Now we need to go around to the other side and work on the uh, exhaust. Here we have our two uh, nuts that hold the exhaust on. And uh, I don't know how, whether it shows up or not, but we're starting to melt the rear fender here uh, with a couple of speed tests that I've done running at a full power. The, uh, the Predator engines tend to go straight that way with the exhaust. And uh, one option would be to weld kind of a, an extension onto the existing muffler. Uh, but I think I want to put a, a higher performing exhaust on this anyways. Now the one I have is not going to stay on there permanently. It is a uh, straight pipe. I don't know whether you can see down in there, but there's like absolutely nothing in that. That's essentially all we're getting for silencing. And uh, not what I want to be running permanently. I would like to get some kind of decent performing, but still have some muffling going on. So let's rip this off and we'll put this straight pipe on. At the very least, we'll hear what it sounds like. And the muffler does not want to come out over the studs. That's interesting. I've got this nice little small pry bar. We'll see if that gives us any kind of help. Perfect. Now the exhaust uh, gasket doesn't really seem to be in that bad of condition. Interesting. I think we'll be able to make the exhaust work. As I said in my uh, first video on the 224, the spacing of the exhaust studs is a little bit further apart than it is on the 212. So this 212 exhaust is not going to fit. But it's so close, a little touch up with a file, I think is uh, all that's going to be necessary to make it work. But I can see we have a problem right away in that the exhaust does not clear the side of the bike. So when it is in there, we are going to have the... Uh, the exact same problem we had before with it hitting the hitting the plastic fender and melting it. A couple of minutes with the file was all that was necessary to uh, elongate these holes just a little bit. 
We'll give this muffler a try if for no other reason than I want to hear what it sounds like. So that fits on there, not too bad. The muffler did come with fresh Allen head screws that we could put in here, but given that we have studs and nuts, we'll go with those. This does give a little bit of clearance to the side of the fender, but it's not great. Uh, it's going to be blowing right on the frame. But for testing purposes, let's hear how it sounds. That's got a nice bark to it. I don't know that I would like to have it like that all the time, but uh, it would be interesting to take it for a little ride with it sounding like that. Unfortunately, it is raining today, so we're not gonna be able to do any performance testing, but I look forward to giving it a try. I'll throw up a short that shows the top speed of this uh, bike now that we've got the stage one kit installed. As I said earlier though, I'm not expecting to see any dramatic increase in top speed because this is still a governed engine. Once we remove the governor, then the engine will be able to spin up faster and therefore the rear wheel will go faster. But uh, for now, I think we'll call this a success.